Welcome back, everybody. This is Ian Chikino with game number three in this best of three series for DreamHack. Let's introduce our two players. Top right hand corner, man who favors Terran and Blue. Maybe not Blue. Depends on how he's setting set up himself, but he's Blue in our game at least, which is my favorite color. So, this game for the Blue people, I'll be rooting for Liquid Tasia. Tasia won last game. Didn't win the first game, of course, which is why we're in the tiebreaker scenario here on Derelict Watcher. Versus his opponent. Bottom left hand corner. Red Terran player. Williams for GG. So we've had, you know, definitely back and forth series as far as wins go. Each game had back and forth moments where a player gets the lead, then they lose. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other player gets a lead at the beginning, and then, then he loses. So, we'll see what's going to happen this game. Will the player that gets the early game lead lose the game as well? Have we just cracked TVT? I don't know. That's up for the, the sages of the StarCraft forums to determine. I'm just a lowly caster. Reapers may be coming out here for Tasia. His gas is not as early as it was last time, I think. I think last time his gas was a lot uh, sooner than it was now. Or maybe his barracks was just much later. I don't know. So long ago. So long ago, guys. <laughs> but Tasia will scout out this game. And luckily for Tasia, this is a two-player map, so he has one option to scout. So he should be good here is what I'm saying. <laughs> Tasia is a little bit scouting impaired. It's happened to every one of us every now and then, but it's funnier whenever a pro player does it. He was one tens of thousands of dollars in StarCraft <laughs> makes a mistake not going completely into your opponent's base um, on a large stage such as DreamHack or youtube.com slash Yanchikino <laughs> he will scout his opponent go all the way up in there but maybe maybe not the, oh the marine says no Tasia you shall not enter you will not scout out my base thank you come again so factory already on the way for Tasia hasn't yet started that second gas just yet. 4GG decided to go with the reactor opening so we're definitely going to see a command center follow this up so he will have the command center sooner than Tasia will uh, and Tasia looking like he's going to go for Banshees again. He's got the second gas coming up so this is feeling a lot like <clears throat> let's see what game does this feel like has there been a game where nope I don't think so I don't think this feels like any of the other two games nope Definitely doesn't. I mean, Tasia went Banshee's last game, so that's the same, but 4GG. Well, he did go for... Okay, so this is a lot like last game. <laughs> now that I think about it. But, okay, he's going to pop out some Marines. This will be nice. Um, yeah, this is definitely like last game. Except we don't have Reapers. That's That was throwing me off. We don't have Reapers like we did last game. It's going to give uh, 4G a little bit quicker of uh, Marines coming out as opposed to getting that Reaper. And uh, he did manage to scout at his opponent. Of course, he sees the factory, sees the gas timings. And he doesn't see the Banshee and the Cloaking coming out. We'll see how he does against it. Last game, we saw him get a bunch of Marines, get a Viking out, and uh, deal with it fairly well. So we'll see if he does the exact same thing here. Second gas goes down. Holding off on SCV production. Guess he's waiting to get that orbital up. There it goes. There's the orbital in. Where's the SCV? There's the SCV. Look at that. Great timings there from uh, 4GG. Reactor being built on the factory. Banshee's coming out. Marines being produced. Good stuff. Good stuff. No inklings yet just of a command center. Speak of the devil. Look at this. This SCV that's been battle-tested down to half-life has been given the honor of building the command center must be a sacred honor among SCVs being able to build the most powerful building in the game can turn into a flying unit it can you know scan stuff from space it has map hacks it can call down a unit that can mine more minerals than anything else in the game it can transform into a giant planetary cannon for God's sakes Jesus is there anything this building cannot do can't make probes or drones but other than that it can do quite a lot of stuff 
So the Banshee is walking into the main. Scan. He's got enough for a scan. And will he get it? Oh, look at the Viking timing. Yeehan timing right there, baby. But, oh, the Banshee. What's he doing? Oh, there, there's a second scan. <laughs> I thought... I thought he was going to go back into the scan radius there, but no. Tasia too good for that. Forces a second scan, but definitely worth it. Definitely worth killing a Banshee using that second scan, but we have a second Banshee on the way. Will it get scouted out? He might have seen it there. Time will tell. Raven coming out, so that'll be nice. He's got his uh, second orbital command, so he does have enough scans for this. He's got two more scans, so not a big deal. Not a big deal to use an extra scan on a Banshee whenever you have yourself an extra orbital command. Marine coming a little bit too hot. And heavy will get toasted. More Hellions coming out. 4G, feeling like, you know what? That game I won where I went mech, that was a good idea. Let's do that again. So we have the Flying Barracks. Uh, going to try and draw some Marine Fire. But shows up a little bit too late. Does get out the Siege Tank, backs up. That's a lot of Hellions. That is quite a few Hellions. Uh, but we have the Banshee. How many kills did he get? Zero. Zero kills so far. He saw that Raven. Viking figures, you know what? I'd rather stay alive. Brilliant decision, Banshee. Stim being researched here by Teji. He knows that's good stuff. He loves the stim, that uh, go go juice in there that this tech lab is making in there. I guess that's the green stuff going around, these little waves and stuff. I don't know what they're doing in there. They got some type of breaking bad scenario, I'd imagine. They're making the making the the uh, the crystal. Crystal meth. Bunker being built. Tasia playing defensive right now. Still has that Banshee flying around, which managed to get five kills. Look at this. Marines, pay attention. You're getting killed. Your brethren are dying. A couple of SUVs bite the dust. Vikings or Ravens finally show up. Say everything's okay here. It's all right, guys. Don't worry about those guys that are dead. A couple Marines... Uh, sorry. Widowmind's heading out. And where's the detection for Tasia? I think he made a Raven. No, he didn't make a Raven. So he doesn't have any detection short of uh, scans. Barracks still flying over here. This is going to allow 4G to have a... Soft contained on his opponent. This Banshee can just fly over here. Oh no, he's going to bait the Banshee to the Widow Mines. That'd be awesome. Is he going to do it? Yep. There's one over here. He can do it. But he's not going to fall for it. He goes straight back up. Probably sees this guy right here. It's a lot of Vikings and there's the Raven. I knew I saw a Raven earlier. It's hiding up here. He's trying to catch any Banshees that fly on or Metavacs. Not going to catch either of those. Plus one. Attack on the way for Teja, of course. He's going to get that bio upgrade heading on. Third base going up here for 4 GG. Tasia has yet to start his. More factories being built. Five seems to be the magic number for 4 GG once you're on two bases, soon to be three. He can usually take his third base, start to set up some defense. Um, as far as AA goes, 4 GG doesn't have much of it to speak of. I think he's got, so he's got a Raven and three Vikings. His opponent with eight Vikings and one Raven. So right now, Tasia does have the air superiority, which uh, paid dividends for him and for part of game number one, at least. Tasia trying to push out a little bit here. Maintain uh, control right outside his natural. He wants to take that third base that's down here. He did kill that Widowmine with that scan. Hellion's just looking for an opportunity to run up and kill some stuff. If the opportunity arises, Blue Flame being researched, plus one attack going down for mech at 4, uh, four GG. One more poor Marine bites the dust. He ventured too far. Got toasted. Now, this one Marine will scout out his own third and see that, the, yes, that is a barracks there. He will be forced to kill that. A couple more Marines go, show up to the party. Tasia setting up a nice little marauder, <laughs> a marauder wall. Um, this is the anti-Hellion wall that he's got built here with all the marauders way out front, the Marines in the back. This is the most elegant display of bio I think I've seen from Tasia, just like setting this up. The most optimal way to set up versus <laughs> versus <laughs> versus Hellions. This is quite amusing for me. And let's see, is Tasia going to try and crack the front line, the defense? That is Team Tasia. Is he going to go for it? He sees the Marauders. Now look at this. Tasia just moves his units and they all get messed up. He's going to go for an attack and that's going to cause 4GG to retreat. And this is quite a force here from Tasia pushing out. Third base uh, still under construction, making that orbital. Adding on two more barracks, but he's got a decent sized force. But what what does he have here on 4GG side? He's got a couple siege tanks, a lot of Hellions, and a small number of Vikings. Will the air superiority pay off for Tasia? He only has one siege tank. That is a lot of Vikings. I mean, is he going to land them? What is he going to do with this? He's just going to kill the Raven, who threw down a point defense drone, and he's going to kill the rest of the Vikings. 
Uh, but that's it. The Hellions just murdered through all those Marines. Those guys were not in a good position. But look at the Vikings land. The Marauders are still alive. Siege Tanks have nothing to defend them. Team Tasia breaks through for GG with a bio slash a massive amount of Viking play. Walks right on through there. He just did not have an answer to those Marauders and their Marauders. The Vikings were just too much here. And 4GG is going to lose a lot of stuff, if not the game, very quickly here. That's that's a decent number of Vikings. Sure, you can lift up the orbital, but that's, there's nowhere to run, guy. You're versus Vikings. They're Transformers in disguise. And there goes that poor command center. And Tasia with some great timing just walks in there. Those Marauders were exactly what he needed. The Hellions, I mean, they melted those Marines super quick, but... Uh, the Marauders just so sustainable there. And now Tasia just kind of, with his Transformers Vikings, just kind of walking up in the natural. Killing a Thor. Gonna go ahead to the third here. He's got some medevacs because, uh, gotta keep those Marauders healed. And, uh, this, this, this barracks is kind of just keeping an eye out. He's not gonna be as victorious as he was in game number one. And there's the GG. Tasia takes a very definitive game number three victory as opposed to the pre previous two games we saw in the series, which was very back and forth. So Tasia will not be stopped, except for game number one, <laughs> where he was stopped. But nevertheless, congratulations to Tasia taking this series 2-1 versus 4GG. Got to say, 4GG put on uh, some fun games there as well. But Tasia was just too much. There was just too much Tasia for 4GG to deal with, and that's going to give him the series. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. If you enjoyed it, leave a comment. I love to read your comments. Um, check me out on Twitter at... Yonchikino, E-O-N-S-H-I-K-E-N-O, -E and follow me on YouTube or subscribe to me on YouTube, whatever the terminology is that kids use these days, youtube.com slash Yonchikino. See you guys later.